Uh, we did beat Bug in game two. Okay, all right. So <laughs> round two, Vintage Showcase, playing against Hogak. Uh, yes. Uh, interesting, 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 interesting. This is close to one of the hands that you can actually keep that is not a bizarre hand. So we go turn one death right shaman. We're on the play. Turn one death right shaman. Turn two strip mine. Uh, and death right shaman. That's putting two cards in the yard, and then we have the ability to play root walla is three in the place two to five. We're a little bit short. I think this hand. If this hand had a stitcher supplier, it would probably be a keep. Uh, but because it doesn't, if this was a stitcher supplier, I would keep this hand. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't have a stitcher supplier, so I'm gonna mulligan this hand. Uh, yeah, this hand's way better. Sure. Yeah, if I think actually the hand the the seven card hand is capable with a scissor supplier. You always need to be on the lookout for keepable hogak hands because actually just a hogak without a bazaar is sometimes <laughs> uh sometimes good enough. I'm gonna put away the um the force of vigor. Well, it's terror actually. No, I'm gonna put away the Force of Vigor. I like the flexibility of Stitcher Supplier or Wasteland on the next turn in combination with Mist Up. What's up, Robin? Appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, all right. Bizarre. You <laughs> wish. Uh. Uh, Vengevine, Hogak, and I actually think I'm going to hold the second Bazaar just in case I get Wastelanded, because I actually can't play through Wasteland very well here. I think I'd rather have the ability to have a second Bazaar or a Citrus Supplier on turn two. Terror has been known to Wasteland before. See if they have a Wasteland. Okay, no Wasteland. Very nice. It's not a big deal because obviously we can just pitch this bazaar to this bazaar. So we don't lose too much besides the ability to wasteland our opponent on turn two. But it's very likely we're playing Stitcher Supplier on turn two anyways. So if this is any spell off of off of C. Kind of wish I had a wasteland now. C. Hmm. C. All right. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to let that happen. Um, I'm thinking like Doomsday. Where my mental misstep does get a little bit better if I if I keep it in hand. Uh, it is a little hard to keep cards in hand in this deck, but nope, not Doomsday. Ruby means not Doomsday. Interesting. Uh, time walk. Interesting. Probably getting pitched. So if I hit Venge Vines and then a Root Walla, I want to play Stitcher Supplier first. Yeah, I'm gonna play Stitcher Supplier first. Uh, Underground C for sure. Though I probably have to pitch this time walk anyways. Like it's like very likely. Uh, that did not. I lost the Hollow one that I would have drawn, and the Ancestral that I would have drawn. Uh, wow, that is bad draws. That is a bad, those are bad draws. What I can do is go misstep, bizarre, bayou pitch, and then go load it, uh, Lotus time walk. And that way I get to upkeep bizarre and try again, but it's very all in. I could also theoretically just pitch bizarre Lotus bayou and keep time walk misstep. It's going to be pretty hard for us to return this. It's not actually super hard for us to return this vine because if we draw. Uh, any other creature we can play, or um, actually the time walk play seems reasonable, just because there are a lot of ways where we can double spell because of Hogak. Uh, I lose my one protection spell. I think this is fine though. You could you could also theoretically keep the second bazaar, but I, I think that this is the highest upside play. There are definitely ways that we can double spell uh, to return the, Venge the Vengevine because we have Hogak. So all we really need is like a Stitcher Supplier or like a, a Root Walla in upkeep. Uh, so in my upkeep, I'm going to activate this Bizarre Baghdad looking to hit Root Wallas. I, of course, hit Hollow One. Okay. 
Uh, so now I'm looking to draw Stitcher Supplier, Hollow Un, which costs one mana. We we bricked pretty hard here. I mean, if we hit a ghast and drew a land, that's another way. I don't know what you're trying to say, Unicorn. I mean, we've hit, like, land, 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 mox, mox, ancestral, hollow ones. So we've obviously missed on all of our graveyard cards. One has six cards in hand, so I can't... it's going to be quite hard, especially if they have, like, a hole breacher here. Um... Which we can't really interact with. They have a Lavinia. Kind of annoying. And probably means I lose as well. If they just have Ancestral after I pitch Mental Misstep. Yeah, I mean, I think we low rolled pretty hard on those draws for sure. Uh, we're, we're, t we're 18 cards in and we've seen uh, one, two graveyard card matter, two cards that are graveyards mattered. But I mean, I did that to myself, right? I put Ancestral, Mental, and Time Walk into my deck. So it's something to do with, you know, deck configuration as well. That can definitely happen. But so unfortunately, opponents at seven cards in hand. We have no idea what they're playing. Still, it could be PO. Uh, it could be a Tinker deck. Here, I want to not activate an upkeep because I can uh, draw into like a Hollow One, or I, I can keep one card that I draw with my Bazaar. Uh, so if I draw like a land here, I could even bin Blood Gasts, bring back Blood Gasts. Um. This is good if my death right resolves. So, Bin Vigor, Gast, Vengevine, cast Death Right Shaman. If this resolves, we're in great shape. It did resolve. So now I can cast Hogak and return Vengevines. Wasteland, Lotus, Jet, Hollow One, Hollow One, I guess. I want to leave lands that I would use with my Death Right Shaman, and I want to leave spells that I would eat. I don't know why everything's resolving, um, but I'm okay with that. All right, so they have to win on the next turn or they lose. I mean, they could to they could totally do it. I don't know what their deck is, but if they don't have counter spells, it means they have action, right? Like, theoretically, if they had force of negations, they would have hit our time walk. I mean, if they tinker, we could still lose, right? I don't know what's happening, but it's a, it's on opponent to kill us here. They could be on all lands, sure. Um, not a lot of balances in the main decks, but balance is obviously a possibility. But they would lose their seven card hand with a balance, so I'm not too worried about balance. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about leaving Ruby untapped. I don't know what that could mean. Doesn't seem like that would be correct. Maybe they're just like looking at their deck. We could get breached. Yeah, yeah, we could get breached here. We could get breached very easily here. Demonic for Lotus, uh, breach brain freeze. Yeah, that would kill us. Yep, looks like we're gonna have to. Yeah, we're dead. So breach Lotus, demonic for brain freeze. Oh, wait, do they have enough? One, two, three. Demonic for three. They're one short, aren't they? No, they have exactly enough. Fucking, I hate breach so much. They have exactly enough cards in yard. I don't know if we went too far, too hard in like getting rid of our um, misstep, but yeah, they have exactly enough. So they demonic and then they lotus off of demonic ancestral probe and then they brain freeze us and then our brain freeze themselves and then they brain freeze us. So we're dead here. Oh, this card is so good. Yeah, so they drew Ancestral Demonic, which is kind of the end of the road for <laughs> playing against Breach, for sure. I'm going to let them do it. Uh, once they cast the first Brain Freeze, I'll, I'll concede, and we'll just go to the next game. All right, we're good here. I could 
stay and see more of their deck, but I, I just I know what's in the breach deck, so I guess I could see if they have like whole reachers or something, but so we're gonna bring in our deafening silence package, we're gonna bring in our collector oof, and we're gonna bring in our mind break trap. I don't and we're gonna bring in our late line of the void, especially against the non-green version. Don't like surgical against them, but I do like Leyline of the Void. I've come all the way around on the Leyline of the Void plan. Um, and so in this kind of matchup, I don't like Bloodgast. Um, I don't like the fourth Once Upon a Time. Uh, I would like to trim on the Hogak plan slightly. Uh, it might, might have to be more than slightly. Um, I'm actually going to not do the Collector Oof. Um, I don't want to, I can take out some Wastelands. Because I'm not bringing in that. The Wastelands don't really cast anything here. Unless they, the only way the Wasteland take out is bad is depending on how many Tabernacles they have. Um, so maybe we can leave one Wasteland and go one more once upon a time. And then we just bring in a ton of this and we still have our pretty, still pretty have our, have our core game plan here. I'm not actually sure how people typically board for this matchup, but this is something that I like to do. This card is quite good. Um, opponent will likely have like one wear tear or something that hits hollow one and ley line, and that's about it. And obviously they can like do fair blue things uh, and mentor you, but I, I don't know. You're not really supposed to prep for one mentor. Here I have an active bizarre death right hand with a once upon a time and a mind break trap. Yeah, that's probably reasonable enough. Um, if I hit a uh, Vengevine, it's like a decent chance I can uh return it on turn one. Um, this can find hollow one. I have at least some hate. I think this is a pretty fine hand to keep. I think a hand with leyline in it is obviously a little bit stronger, but uh, I do think I want a once upon a time first. If this gets countered no so i could go supplier or i could just make sure i'd have my venge vine i think well the thing is i didn't water down the deck very much at all right um i didn't cut the graveyard interaction and i cut one hogak is the only uh and like i think the blood gas are kind of superfluous so like I didn't water down like the Vengevine Hogak part of my deck, so I don't really think cutting Supplier is exactly the right way. Maybe cutting the fourth Hogak is not right either, but um, I don't know. I think I want to just take this Vengevine and then Bizarre for a Root Walla or a Hollow one. I missed. Missed. What do I want to do here? All right, I can't play around Rav Trap or Surgical. I might not even play this Deathrite Shaman on turn one. I might just pitch Jet, Hogak, Vine. Maybe I'll pitch Land, Vine, Jet. Jet. Vine, Jet. I think it's better to hold the Death Ray Shaman. So the Death of Shaman does get better when I can put it in play and it's not summoning sack. This is our showcase round two. Down a game. Like Vigor's not great against them, but it's not bad. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go like this. It's a little low power, but I think. It provides me the most versatility and the highest chance of venge vining on the next turn. I also want to try to find a way to play around Rav Trap if possible. Uh, but the, fortunately, the fetch land will probably make it so I can't do that. It's your supplier. Unfortunately, Stitcher Supplier would have been very good if I had played the jet the jet line. If I went with the jet line, the Stitcher Supplier is a lot better. I feel like they have a Rav Trap. I don't really have much to say about it, though. I 
Looking for like multiple root wallas. Yeah, whatever. Another ancestral hand, sure. Ah, uh, sure. Okay, so can't play around Rav Trap, but we can return Avenge Vine this turn, so we're gonna do so. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pitch Once Upon a Time Force of Vigor Stitcher Supplier. Uh, sorry, Find Find Force of Vigor. Yes, yeah, Stitcher Supply. No, uh, Deathrite Shaman, and then we're gonna go Hollow One into Stitcher Supplier. And then that will trigger Vengevine. So if they have something, then the they will remove the card from the yard, in which case we will then resolve the Stitcher Supplier trigger. I'm going to get Underground Seat. Oh, that just resolves. I, why am I reluctant to pitch Hogak? Because I don't want it to get hit by the Rav Trap. <laughs> I don't want the Hogak to get hit by the Rav Trap. I can't get... Uh, lots of things can't happen. Surgical, Rav Trap, tons of stuff. Oh, I hit a Hogak from my yard. All right, so I definitely think it's better to play this Hogak from my yard and rather than attack with the Vengevine. I think opponent maybe... Uh, opponent could have a Tabernacle as well. Uh, silence. Get... Creature. All right, so we have at least one piece of interaction here. We have uh, four, eight, 17 power. Yeah, the reason I don't want, I don't want to put Hogak in my yard because this is a trigger so they can respond by surgical, they can respond by Rav Trap. Like there's, there's a lot of opportunities for opponents to use graveyard interaction and I definitely would rather, like I have, the, if I have the ability to hold the Hogak in hand, I would rather hold the Hogak in hand. Also, keeping the Hogak in hand means there are more cards in the yard to exile for the Hogak. So there's like a couple things like that. So I'm a little concerned because we are three damage short of killing our opponent, which means they get two turns to kill us, which is bad. Oh, they do have the tabernacle. Okay. So it kind of felt like they might have a tabernacle. So we're going to lose one, two, three and keep a Hogak, which is not bad, which is not bad. LED, interesting. I'm not going to trap the... I can't trap the LED anyways, but... LED is not a normal card. Maybe I should have let them play there. Maybe I should have let them play game one all the way through. Um. All right, so I'm just going to pay for this Hogak, which is fine. And then these all die, but we have an 8-8, eight, eight, so... And they can't really... Um... If we hit like multiple venge vines off of things, uh, things get better as well. Leyline of the Void, classic. Uh, is there any way we return venge vines? If we draw exactly Rootwalla, Rootwalla. Um, misstep is gone. Yeah, I think it's still probably fine. We can find Wastelands as well. Let's see, do I want to hold one Vengevine? I guess it doesn't actually matter if we hold Vengevines. If we get our graveyard hit, we don't really have ways to combat that anyways. I don't think we really have any options, so I might as well hold Gak. I don't know. Either way, we get kind of crushed, so... I guess I would rather the Surgical not hit the card that's in our hand, so... All right, so they're at 12, which is not bad because we can pay for this, and we are threatening lethal with our Venge Vines. Obviously, drawing Venge Vines there is actually really bad, uh, because we don't need more Venge Vines. I guess it's good if they had some way to deal with this Hogak. Um, but it's like pretty hard for us to return Venge Vines. 
they, they typically don't have a way to deal with Hogak. So if you can pay for Tabernacle and have a Hogak, it's usually good enough. The problem, I guess the thing is, if they did have a way to deal with Hogak, then we could have an extra mana to use. I'm definitely just going to keep paying for this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we're just looking to draw like Hollow One and Root Wallace. Interesting. 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 I still think I'm trying my best to do this. Uh, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to want to activate this bazaar a second time anyways, so I'm going to just hold the, I'm going to hold the death right shaman in my hand. Am I going to hold the supplier in my hand? No, I want to hold the death right shaman in my hand, I think. Also a green card in case I drew force of vigor. So we didn't find any root wallas or hollow ones. So we're basically on the same place we were last game where we have lethal and they have to kill us. And they're going to vamp and kill us. Wonderful. Maybe they'll like go all in on an LED because they don't have black they don't have black lotus, so they'll go all in on LED and we'll be able to mind break trap them. Maybe. Uh, I would think that typically one piece of disruption would not be enough here, but because they have LED, there's definitely a chance. There's definitely a chance. They could just have force, right? And then there'd be a problem. They're at two life. Hmm. Yeah, that's 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 the rest of this game. The rest of this game is can we trap at the right time if they don't have oh they have Lotus too. Okay. Yeah. All right. If they play another spell before breach. I guess maybe we could trap freeze. Whoa, they have mentor. <laughs> oh no, they have oh. <laughs> All right. Well, whatever, man. Can't do anything about this. We dead. I mean, they <laughs> they they have combo with protection backup, right? So, oh uh, yeah. I think this is probably one of the hardest matchups uh, for Hogak, so a little unfortunate, I guess. Uh, we like, fought through Tabernacle pretty well, and we had a lot of opportunities to win the game if we drew double spell, uh, but we just didn't. So, like, if we drew Hollow One or Rootwalla in the last two turns of that game, we would have brought back the one Vengevine we needed. I feel like in game one we bricked very hard, and in this game we also bricked very hard. I, this game, we didn't break as hard, I would say. We had a really good start. Um, but uh, we definitely... They have Mind Break Trap in their deck? That's insane. That card is unplayable in this matchup. Whoa. I don't... I, I barely cast two spells a turn. I guess you can technically trap a Hogak sometimes, but... Maybe that's like their only way to deal with Hogak, so maybe it's maybe that's the logic, I guess. Seems very narrow. Seems very narrow. So another thing is if we had hit No, that wouldn't have worked. They have Ancestral to kill on their turn. Yeah, I would I would not be boarding in Mind Break Trap against Hogak. That would be not something I would be doing. I'm, 
Lavinia is quite good against our deck. Um, we did see white in game one. All right, so I, I should have... I, I mean, not that Assassin's Trophy versus Lavinia mattered here. Um, but I probably am supposed to bring in Assassin's Trophies, maybe? I don't know. It's so narrow. Like, Lavinia has to come down at, before I do, like, my thing. Which, my, I do my thing on turn one and turn two. And I'm on the play. Maybe, like, if we were going to a game on the draw, we might have to play an Assassin's Trophy. We probably should... Like, what I'm saying is we, we should have let our opponent <laughs> combo off in game one. Uh, we probably should have let our opponent combo off in game one so we had a better idea of what's going on. I think I got a little... What is going on? What are they doing? Are they mad that I'm making them play it out? They're the one that said I'm cutting into their COD time. Yo, I'll let them style. Style all you like. They exiled Recall? Sure. They, they just exiled Lotus too, but this is uh, 36 copies. So we go to zero and we lose, unfortunately. I'm going to Mind Break Trap them. I want to see if I can get their get their blood pressure up a little bit here. <laughs> oh, wait. Can I just not cast it because it costs four mana? Never mind. It costs zero mana, but it actually costs four mana. Imagine if I sighted in Creeping Chill. That's just the tech right there. Maybe that is the tech. What if that's the tech? What if, what if the tech? Oh, what if that's the tech? All right, all right, I want to go play Lantern, so we're gonna concede. <laughs> I want to go. I want to go play Lantern. Uh, <laughs> it's okay to lose match one of Lantern, seeing as uh, I, yeah, it, they were mad that I that I was taking up their COD time, but then they're just styling. Just kill me. I don't think that sounds very good, Slasher. It was memes. It was memes. It was memes. All right. So the deck uh, did the Tinker thing in game one. That was nice. Or not game one, in game two. Why is everyone playing Luminarch Aspirants? Why? Why? Can we stop? Stop playing Luminarch Aspirant in Vintage. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> Why? Oh, I've built decks like this before. You just lose to shops, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, Why did you bring in Mindbreak Trap, um, Terror? I'm trying to figure that one out. <laughs> 